Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to degree a camshaft without using a degreeing wheel. If you have a degreeing wheel, great, use it. It's the best way. How I'm going to show you today is my opinion. Take it as unprofessional advice. It's hot in here, so I'd like to get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is by eye, get this as true as we can be with the dot at the six o'clock position and this dot at the noon position. So six o'clock, so six o'clock and 12 o'clock. That's how we want it, okay? By eye, I got this perfectly lined up the best I can see so now what we're gonna do is just do a quick verification on this. So what I'm gonna do is put my timing chain cover on with just a bolt per side. Just this. Like that, I just pushed it up in there. No gasket or nothing, we're not sealing this up yet. We're just checking timing. I put a bolt on this side, a bolt on this side and just snugged it up. And now we did that for our timing indication and now we'll take our harmonic balancer or dampener or whatever you want to call it we're gonna put it on there and we're gonna see if it shows zero with the dots lined up here it is we'll just slip this on there like that there is the line and it's perfectly on zero all right Hopefully you can see it, let me get a light. And this is perfectly on zero, so we have everything true. The timing chain, the harmonic balancer, and the timing chain cover, is everything is saying everything is kosher. Sorry guys, I just had to step in the AC for a minute. Swallow a, a cold, Diet root beer. Whew. While we're in here, I'd just like to throw out to you, if you put your timing chain at six o'clock and uh, 12 o'clock uh, on the crank and you got them, you're sure they're perfectly lined up and you check your harmonic balancer with your timing plate and if it's two, one or two degrees off, that could be in the timing chain, it could be in the harmonic balancer, especially if you're using the old harmonic balancer and it slipped on the, I guess I'll call it the, uh, the, the rubber for the dampening. Um, <clears throat> so you just wanna, at that point in time, you wanna verify top dead center. You can do that. If your head's off, it's really simple. You put a dial indicator right up on top of the piston and uh, you go, there's only about a four degree variance at where it sits still before it starts to rotate on the downward stroke. So um, you get your piston at top dead center <clears throat> But if you got the head on like I do, at that point you'd stick a screwdriver in there and you would rock it back and forth, the crank, to where you were confident you're in the middle of where it stops and before it starts to go back down. You know, and like I said, if you guess you're in the middle, then uh, if you verify the top dead center, then you can go back and check and see if it's the timing chain or the harmonic balancer or, or whatever. But you know, I've rarely, you know, I've never ran across uh, where I've had a problem with that. They've always been right true dead on. So even if the head's off using the indicator, I just use the timing marks. If they're true and they're accurate, why not? Line right there tells you it's, it's on. I'm feeling better already. We'll go back out. Now all you're gonna do is come over here and what it's in the process of doing and why it had to be at the six o'clock position and uh, 12 o'clock position because it's in the process of the overlap of the exhaust valve closing and the intake valve opening. Now, we know that we got it on top dead center by the timing marks, so we're just gonna take a flat edge and we're gonna hold it like this across there, or you can get a better flat edge that you know is flat. We're gonna hold it across there and at top dead center, we have to touch 
all four points of the lifter. One, two, three, four. So you got two lifters and you want to cross both out both outside diameter, the ODs on each lifter. There shouldn't be any gaps. There shouldn't be uh see if I can hold this up. Wish I had a magnetic flashlight. Let's see if I can make something here happen. You shouldn't be able to see a light through there, and you shouldn't be able to rock either way. If I press on this one, I can't push down on this side. And if I push flush on this one, I can't push down on this side. And all this is, is a report card to the cam manufacturer. I know you guys probably can't see this, but there is absolutely no gap. It's 100% flush. Now, if I put this on there, and I can see five or six or ten thousandths gap from on this side, then you know that the cam needs to be moved one way or the other. All right, so how much, if there was a, a gap there, well, you just come over here and look at your wheel. So, say they're not lined up. So you turn this one way or the other to get the lifters to, to be totally flush going across. And let's say you pull it up and it takes it to four degrees to get it flush. If it's four degrees advanced and you want it on top dead center, then you just got to use the four degrees D advanced that we have on our timing chain. And that puts it right on zero. In my case, on this cam from Oregon Cam Grinds, they get an A plus because there is absolutely no rock, no variance whatsoever, no air gap, nothing. And all four points of the of the lifter is touching and just to be clear one more time you're touching this part this part of each lifter so when you lay it across it should be touching both sides like this one like like this and the same with the one on this side if you get a slight air gap of a few thousandths of an inch then you know the cam is a little bit off but again I just match up six o'clock 12 o'clock, it's timing chain is straight up. The line is straight on zero, so we're kosher. The only thing left to check is if the lifters are kosher. So if you swap in a camshaft, you can degree the camshaft this way or check the degree of the camshaft is really what you're doing. You're verifying the degree of the camshaft. Simple as this with the head on. So Oregon cam grinds, you guys get an A plus. Um, it's dead on. A lot of people use a feeler gauge and they will tell you that you know a general rule of thumb for easy math five thousandths is about two degrees and so if you got if you put a feeler gauge in there of five thousandths you gotta degree it to whatever if it's kosher if everything's true if this is on dot dead center like it is well if it's off five degrees it'll show it right here this will be up here or down here it depends on if it's before top dead center or after top dead center you know this mark's going to go either way in our case it worked out fine all right guys that's enough for me today i'm sweating <laughs>